Right, good afternoon everybody and uh, welcome to this session. We're going to have a, um, two short films uh, which Liam Patterson from the Scottish Screen Archive is going to introduce for us and then we're going to go straight on to Sam's Boy. And uh, I know Sam's Boy is an absolutely delightful film and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. I think it's a real find um, and I'm sure there's two short films are as well. They're recovered short films that, uh, that Liam will talk about first. Um, Gunt is going to be playing for us so uh, without further ado I welcome Liam Patterson off the stage. Thank you. Uh, firstly, my apologies this afternoon. I'm clearly not Janet McBain, the curator of the Scottish Screen Archive, but uh, I've uh, fairly selflessly sacrificed myself to come down here and watch two days at least of uh, very, very good films. Um, two short films coming up. Uh, they're both from the Fisher Collection. Uh, named after Henry E. Fisher, who was a producer based in Soho Square in London. Uh, we started collecting films in the 1920s, and the collection ranges from 1895 to 1920, mostly. Uh, by the 1970s, the collection ended up in the Bundesarchiv in Berlin, and from there, much later, 2005, it came to the Imperial War Museum Film and Video Archive. Uh, of the 15, 1,500 cans at that point, some that were of specifically Scottish interest came to us at the Scottish Screen Archive. Um, I'm not sure which order the films are going to be coming in, but one of the two, uh, I thought it was the first of the two, is to Rona on a Whaler. This was made by Otter Films, about whom we know very little or nothing. Uh, it's 35mm, black and white, tinted and toned. Lasts around 12 minutes. Preservation work was done by Press Tech in 2008 from a, a very shrunk negative. The North Rona in the title of the film is a very small island 44 miles north northeast of the Butt of Lewis in the Hebrides. Um, it's arguably even more remote than be the better known St Kilda. It's home at present to sheep, uh, grey seals, storm petrels. Uh, it, was it was inhabited up to the 19th century and the last temporary inhabitants left in about 1884. And there's an intertitle in the film which states, Rona has been deserted 30 years, so we've got a very approximate date for the film of about 1914 or thereabouts. It's certainly no earlier than 1904 when the whaling station on the island of Harris, which you'll see in the film, was built. And it's certainly no later than 1919. When I was looking into this before I came, I found a, a mention, uh, googled to Rona and the Whaler, and I found a mention on the National Library of New Zealand website, which has a press cutting uh, telling us that in 1919 this film was shown to the citizens of Poverty Bay in the North Island of New Zealand. So you'll be the first people to see it since kind of 1919 <laughs> in the North Island of New Zealand. Um, it's also, the article also uh, suggested that it may have been a pathy interest film. I'm not sure about that yet. Now, we have a couple of intrepid explorers in, the, in that film as well. We don't know why they catch the lift on a whaler to Rona. They may have been naturalists, they may have been geologists. If the times around about 1914, they may even have had sinister military reasons for going to Rona. Don't know. Uh, but at the very least, the film is a very graphic reminder of the fact that this country was involved in the whaling industry up until in the 1952, in fact, when the whaling station on Harris was finally abandoned. The second film, or the other film, uh, was made in Great Yarmouth, filmed in Great Yarmouth, but it's a wonderful depiction of a very important part of Scotland's economy in the early part of the 20th century. Each year, thousands of Scottish fisher lassies followed the herring fishing fleet down from Shetland Isles, down the east coast of Britain, as far as Lowestoft and Yarmouth, we see them here in uh, Yarmouth Harbour in crews of three, working in crews of three, cutting, gutting the herring, their hands bound with bandages to protect them from the knives and the salt and the water, uh, and packing it into barrels with brine. It's mainly Scottish boats that you see in the film. You can make, just make out some of the registrations on them uh, coming into Yarmouth Harbour. Um, and it's the end of the herring fishing season. The boats are fifes and Zulus and steam drifters and they come from ports as far north as Inverness, Bucky and Banff. Again, this is a 35mm black and white tinted and toned. It's about six minutes, but it's incomplete, so we don't actually know what the full running time would have been. 
The other thing is it's not actually called in the calm waters of the year. That's just a working title that we gave it a wee while ago. And it's the first intertitle as the boats, you see the boats coming into the mouth of the river. Um, there are a few, having a look, quick look into what it might be, there are a few films in the catalogues from this period about herring fishing around Britain. And we think it may be Herring Harvest at Yarmouth from 1910, made by W.G. Barker. But we don't know. So there's a few unknowns involved in this. If anyone has any information, knows anything about them, we'd be very pleased to hear from you. Otherwise, we would like to present the films today if in new prints, if not as premieres, well, at least the first public showings for a very long time. So we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. 